If you wanna hear about St. Louis, tune in to the Bucket List Show Weekly. Hear what Marissa and Luke say. It drops every Wednesday, got a dope new guest every single week. Buckle up for the ride, who's it gonna be? Who's on the show today? They rep St. Louis. What to do in the loo on a late night, or maybe what to do on a date night? Yeah. Bucket list has you covered, they know what's going on, what's going on, they'll give you, hey, 18 different things to do, or 19 if you need one more to choose, yeah, this city, city, city is a place we call home, a place we call home, yeah. What's up, St. Louis? It's your host of the STL Bucket List Show, Luke Farrell. Marissa is sitting this one out. It is busy time at school, so um, we're going to get right into it. But I got to shout out my guy Matt in the back on the ones and twos, cutting up a perfect episode for Spotify, Apple, or even on YouTube if you're watching, um, and uh, basically every platform. So, um, And then also our friends at the Regional Arts Commission of St. Louis. They're the largest public funder of arts and art organizations right here in St. Louis. Um, and when you support art, you support St. Louis. Um, so it kind of rolls into um, who we got today. So um, Counter Public, if, if you guys haven't heard about it, it's it's uh, going to be going on from April 15th to July 15th. Um, it's going to be going on basically all summer. Um, so I have James uh, McNally here. Did I say that right? Close enough. <laughs> Close enough. Um, so James, uh, he is uh, here with Counter Public. Um, we just kind of want to get right into it. But before we start, I'm going to read a little excerpt from your guys' website, and then we can just get right into it. Um, so Counter Public um, is a civic exp exhibition that weaves contemporary art into the life of St. Louis for three months every three years in order to reimagine civic infrastructures towards generational change. Counter Public's second edition will run from April 15th to July 15th of 2023. Um, so tell us about it. <laughs> You're cool. Yeah. I mean, we've really built this thing. Uh, it's a public art platform that is uh, working with about 30 artists to run the full length of Jefferson Avenue. So it runs the, the length of the city uh, and it tells a kind of timeline, a story of the city uh, with art and performance and kind of, um, yeah, looking to weave art into the everyday life of the city. Yeah, that, that's amazing. So, James, I want to learn a little bit more about your background. You know, you've been in St. Louis for a while. You've been in the scene. So if you want to give us a little, you know, update on your background and kind of what led you into this project with Counter Public. Yeah, I mean, I come to this work. I've been in arts and culture in St. Louis for a long time. Uh, I started a space called The Luminary, um, was one of the directors of that space for almost 15 years. So I've been kind of on the ground doing this work and really seeing uh, what art brings to the city uniquely. I think artists have a uh, kind of voice to speak to issues of our time, to respond to what's happening around us, but also to bring a uh, new insight to what's, what's there. So um, yeah, being here, seeing the energy of uh, what artists really do in the city brought me to counter public. Yeah. It's, it's special. And I've been, you know, getting into the scene a little bit more as of late and just going to, you know, small galleries, going to these other organizations, you know, every big ones too. I mean, but really just getting immersed in the culture. And I think that working with the regional arts commission as well as them putting us on to what they do for the community and, and really, um, but I don't think people realize how big this is going to be. I mean, counter public, you know, three months, that's, that's a long time. I mean, most people do a weekend festival. I mean, I, and I'm not saying it's a festival, but like this is a three month event. So, you know, I know people that are listening, you know, it's hard to, to see, but guys check out their website, but tell us how big this is really going to be. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's going to be one of the nation's largest public app art platforms. Uh, you're talking about the regional arts commission. Um, they're, uh, doing an incredible job. They're really like taking care of the public art of our city, Cranzberg arts foundation. I know you uh, yeah. do some work with, they have the walls off Washington, the mural project. Mm -hmm. And really, I think we're seeing this happen more and more where, um, art moves into public space. And that's really the core of our mission of like, where does art connect with people? Uh, where does it connect with the city? Um, so with this, you know, we're already, we're a couple months out and people are booking their travel to come to St. Louis. We get emails every day. People um, from the coast are coming to St. Louis saying like, I want to experience this thing. They've heard about Counter Public from one corner or another. Um, and so we want uh, our city to know about it yeah. first and experience it because we've created it for them. Um, but it's really a dynamic, unique platform that has 30 new commissions that all are created here. They've never been seen before. They're not exported from anywhere else. They're coming in some of the world's leading artists to make work uh, in and for St. Louis. Wow. Yeah. So the, the artists that are, that are coming in, they're going to be here beforehand, like prepping their work and working on it as, as the months go on. 
Yeah, yeah, I would say like we kept our uh, cards close to the chest. Uh, yeah. You know, they, they call it the show me state for a reason. We realized like we have to build something real. Yeah. You know, we didn't want to be a flash in the pan. Um, so we did the kind of groundwork um, over the last couple of years to artists have been coming in quietly building these works. Um, yeah. they're, they're things, a lot of St. Louis artists, a lot of out of town artists um, creating uh, pieces that are site specific. So they're made for the place they're going to be shown in. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we've been building this thing uh, quietly. Uh, April 15th, it opens kind of fully open. It's all free, all open to the public. So we would love to see people down there. How hard is that to keep like it under wraps? Because I, I read something like in 2021 is when you were conducting a lot of your guys' research and like getting involved with the community. And then now you're bringing people in. I mean, this has been going on for a long time. And yeah. I'm just now hearing, I'm pretty plugged in and I just started hearing about it two months ago. Totally. It's a, it's a multi-year process, but we started really in the neighborhood. So we're working on Jefferson Avenue. It's one of the major North South arteries mm -hmm. uh, of St. Louis. Uh, once upon a time, it was the Western border of the city. Mm -hmm. um, now just West of downtown. Um, so we spent a whole year just talking to our neighbors, talking to the people in those neighborhoods. It touches, uh, half of the city's neighborhoods, mm -hmm. just that one street. So it's kind of incredible. Um, so our community engagement lead at the time, uh, Shiraz Gorman, she's a poet, storyteller, community health advocate. And she, she was going to bus stops. She was going to, you know, uh, neighborhood businesses. She was just talking to people and saying, what kind of, uh, what's on your mind? What issues are facing your life? What is important to you? What do you think St. Louis needs? And really like doing that ground level work. Mm -hmm. So we weren't talking about that publicly very much. We were just sort of out there um, doing our plans because we wanted um, we wanted to build something that, again, it was for St. Louis first. And so we were talking to to people and where they were at. And it, you know, being running from the far kind of South City through downtown to North City, like the issues that people are facing are very real. Like they had very real challenges. And it was kind of like, what is art going to do for me? Um, was a real question that we heard a lot. And so, um, so yeah, it's, it's responding to the many histories of St. Louis, um, through a kind of dynamic exhibition. Yeah, that's true. You know, cause like you said, there's a lot bigger problems. Like what is a public piece of art going to do, but what it, what I think it's going to do and what I know it's going to do is it's going to bring those neighborhoods together. It's going to make those businesses thrive. It's going to bring economy here, you know, even if it's, you know, well, three months, a long time, but even if it is every three years. So why is it, why, why, why three months, every three years, what's, what's the story behind that? I know there's a story with that. Yeah, totally. I mean, in, in the arts, you call it a triennial. Sometimes we, we talk about this as a civic exhibition, because again, I think we're, we're building something that is bigger than just art. Um, oh, of and course. I think, uh, for us, the three months, every three years, it's to do it right. It's to create a moment that like now is the moment to come to St. Louis to experience the full breadth of arts and culture here. So not just counter public. We want this to build into like the small galleries you're talking about. Some of uh, the partners we're working with, places like the Griot Museum of Black History, places like the Luminary, places like Monaco um, also. Beyond that, like we have exhibitions that are going to be at the St. Louis Art Museum, at the Kemper. Um, we're working a lot with the Pulitzer Arts Foundation and Contemporary. So really creating a moment where our arts and culture can come together and create a, a moment that is bigger than all of us, to, you know, in our individual silos. Like right. St. Louis, notoriously, you know, everybody in their own place, like it's divided in some ways. And so we it's wanted clicky. to create some. It's, cl it's clicky. It's mm -hmm. hard to get around sometimes mm -hmm. in neighborhood by neighborhood. And so we we felt like what if we create one sustained moment to like everybody around the country come to St. Louis right now, um, experience the full breadth of culture, but you can't do it all the time, yeah. you know, cause then it um, loses its flavor. It loses, loses its flavor. <laughs> yeah. We can't do that process of, um, really being in the community for a long time, uh, building new commissions, building like really complex projects. Yeah. So every three years you're putting all your, like instantly, you know, July 15th hits, you guys are right back working on, that next set of Definitely. community work. Maybe take a couple of days off. Right? Yeah. I mean, in some ways like we're already in 2026, you know, we're like doing this thing, You're but like, like Olympics. <laughs> yeah. We're building a thing to last Olympics, right? <laughs> You're like the uh, art Olympics, um, except that's every four, but you know, it's the same way though. It's like, there's so much that goes into it. And, and I know from planning events in the past is like the first time's always so special, but how do you keep that same special? How do you keep that same excitement? Like you have to do it right because people in St. Louis, if you don't, they won't come back, you know? So it's really, 
your guys' priority with the community of really like doing, and that's what I loved about, like you said, 2021 was a year where, you know, stuff was shut down. It's like, that's our time to hit the streets and, you know, talk to the community. And like, there, there's a lot more problems going on with job losses and unemployment and like, you know, being able to bring art into the city. And um, yeah, that's, that's just special. And I, I, I can't wait for it. So, so the artists themselves, you know, I read the list and, you know, I looked them up, I, I watched your guys's brand video and stuff, but like, tell us about, you know, some of the highlights of some of these artists that are actually coming here. Yeah. I mean, some of them definitely home homegrown. So one of the biggest pieces we're working with, uh, uh, St. Louis City SC, the new soccer team, uh, Brickline Greenway mm -hmm. um, in the city of St. Louis and Harris Stowe State University to realize a mile long monument to a neighborhood called Mill Creek Valley uh, with uh, artist Damon Davis. So that piece, you can see it at the corner of uh, the stadium opening up, but it's going to grow over the next few years uh, to be a, a full mile down Market Street. Um, so that's one of the projects we're really excited about. Um, but kind of Similar to that at the Grio, uh, one of our biggest projects is with uh, an artist architect named David Ajay. Um, you know, if you're not paying attention to the names, it's not familiar, but uh, he's most notable. Um, he was the designer of the latest Smithsonian National Museum of African American Art, mm -hmm. uh, History and Culture um, in D.C. So this kind of he's he's a knight, you know, yeah. he, he's made it in his career. He right. was one of the time one, top 100 most influential people in the world. And he's creating his first permanent public artwork here in St. Louis. Donated, it'll be permanently on view at the Grio. Wow. Um, so really, you know, we're looking what is local talent, what is the global talent who are coming to St. Louis and say, I want to leave my mark here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're we're kind of embracing it uh, at all uh, all stages. So there are filmmakers, musicians, uh, the 2022 Pulitzer Prize winner. Uh, for music, Raven Chacon, he's doing a sound piece in Benton Park. So, wow, in Benton you know, Park. hitting all cool. the bases. Yeah, like hitting all the neighborhoods. So I'm a South City guy, you know, I'm I'm close to like Chippewa and, and you know, Chippewa, like Kings Highway area. But like, kind of like you said, starting in South City and heading heading up or North City and heading down, like basically hitting all the bases. And, and so these pieces are all going to be permanent pieces or some of them are going to be pop-ups like you said like obviously like musicians and stuff and, and yeah. theater it's a mix so we wanted to leave something behind so it was important for us you know we are three months every three years but we're really thinking like what are we leaving behind what's right. the impact and some of that impact is story some of that impact is just like what does it mean to like come together but some things you know what is permanent we're making sure we're commissioning it and we're donating it to community partners so they're permanent assets that are owned by neighborhood organizations like the Grio. Mm -hmm. um, there's another piece going up the Grand Avenue Water Tower mm -hmm. um, and a new park called Peace Park that's got many, many partners. Um, so really kind of connecting with like who's going to care for and steward this work long term. Um, and, and it's kind of a, a village, takes a village to, to hold public art. Absolutely. Um, so that's that's going to be really, really special because then as the years go by, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 20, 30 years down the road, you know, you're going to have this vibrant community in St. Louis. And I'm already seeing that, like you said, with the Kranzbergs, what they're doing with the wall and they're bringing in people from New York and like local people like Kababis there, like, but it's a mix and it all just vibes together. And that's, you know, projects like that are going to work their way down to different neighborhoods. So like, how can we connect all these neighborhoods through art? Um, it gives people, it gives people a reason to go outside. It gives people a reason to take an Instagram selfie and tag the artist. And like, even though that's little, but that impact builds over time. And, you know, it, it just, uh, you know, it's just, it's just special and, uh, what, what, what they're doing and, and what you guys are doing. So what are, what are some of the, um, cause I mean, I know with every venture, there's always going to be challenges. So, I mean, what, what kind of challenges have you guys felt, if any, you know, over the last, you know, cause this, you guys became a nonprofit in 2021, correct? Or it was 2020. Yeah. So counter public initially, it came out of uh, the luminary. So we did a much smaller edition on Cherokee street in 2019, okay. I think, Many people, most people didn't know about it, but yeah. uh, 30,000 people came through. It was on the cover of uh, the world's largest art magazine the month really? it opened. So it had this kind of DIY ethic, but at the same time, we realized like, oh, we're really onto something. Like yeah, St. Louis works. needs this kind of yeah. platform. Um, so we took our time to, to build that, say like, what does this look like as a sustainable um, organization? But where we're at right now, I think the biggest challenge is like, you know, 30 projects across six miles, mostly in outdoor space, like it's complicated. Um, it, it, it takes um, a lot of time, uh, intentional 
uh, groundwork to to realize it. So I think inevitably there are delays, there are challenges. Um, but I think for us, we've been like really fortunate to feel like, again, like lean on the fact that like St. Louisans have really wanted it. So when we, we show up wherever that's been, whether it's a museum, whether it's, uh, you know, an alderman, the mayor's office, like when we show up and say like, this is what we're trying to do. This is why we're trying to do it. Everyone has said, yes, like, yes, yes, we do want this. We do need this. Um, How can we help? And like that, that has been really like indicative. I think of what St. Louis's art and culture scene looks like right now is that everybody wants to work together. We're realizing like, I think we're on to something, right? Like this is a moment where I feel the energy changing yeah. and we just want to be a part of that. Yeah, I see it. Um, <clears throat> I really love, I'm a brand, like, you know, I'm a designer web, web photo. Like I love your guys' branding, like even your site, like I just looked at it on mobile, but like, you know, everything that you're doing is intentional with, you know, the color. Is there something special with the yellow and black? Like, I just like to get dig deep and like, know like all these things. But um, I think that you guys are really doing a good job with the grassroots, but then also involving community partners. Um, So I don't know if you want to share any of that, but like, you know, tell us about some other, you know, bigger organizations, maybe community partners that, that you guys are working with. Yeah. I mean, for us, it really started out. So like, in the exhibition is six miles long and uh, it starts on the south side at a place called Sugarloaf Mound, which a lot of people don't know about. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the last remaining indigenous mound in the city of St. Louis, which, mm-hmm. you know, maybe you know, maybe you don't, but was like known as Mound City for a long time. And so over the course of its history, most of those mounds were destroyed through construction projects, highways, things like that. And so this one mound is on the southern riverfront, uh, right? Uh, right at kind of uh, where Jefferson becomes Broadway, Mm. hits the river. Um, So we're working with the Osage Nation, who are the ancestors of the mound builders, to activate that site publicly um, for the first time. So artists will be responding to the space. Um, An Osage artist named Anita and Nikosi Fields um, will be creating work there, but also kind of going beyond that, say, like, what does it look like to talk about this history to steward that Mm -hmm. um, and really think about also returning the mound to them. Um, They were able to purchase a portion of the mound um, several years back and, but there are two houses still remaining on the mound. So we were kind of like, all right, what does it look like to show up to this space? Like we're an arts organization. So we were working with artists, but also beyond that, they live there. They, you know, lived there in the past. Yeah. It's 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 respecting their land. Yeah. It's time for them to also, Uh, be able to kind of uh, steward that land and own it um, fully. So we're working with them quite deeply over several years uh, to realize that Um, kind of moving, moving along. Like I think we have really tried to partner with as many people as we can. So Mm -hmm. on all scales, um, you know, we're working a lot with uh, each kind of like neighborhood that we're uh, engaging with. Like there's a project that, you know, it's at a McDonald's, it's at uh, Johnny Brock's, it's at a library, it's at oh, a church at yeah, each yeah. corner of Jefferson and 44. So yeah. it's kind of like, you. it's going to be in the kind of grain of the city, I think. Yeah, no, I know exactly what you're talking about right there. By Johnny Brock's, they pop off a couple times a year when Halloween comes. Um, and Randall's over there, it's like that area right there, right where the highway hits. So um, yeah, that's, that's super special, like really like making it a focus to work with the people, you know, making it a focus to recognize the land that you're actually working on instead of just like saying, Hey, we're going to pop this up. We're going to do all this. We're going to bring all these people out, but not like shedding light to like people that have been in that land and, you know, for years and years and hundreds of years before that. So I think that that's uh, that's unique. And in, in the way that you, you all are approaching it is you're approaching it community first. And I can tell through every, through every venture that, that you all have done. So um, how can we, how can like the, the community of St. Louis, like, you know, we're talking to mostly the younger people that are listening to the show right now that are hearing about this and they're probably following you on IG and like looking up this, like, what can we do? Just show up and just come out, post it, support Like, you know, what can young people do to, to be a part of it? Yeah. I feel like show up, spread the word. I mean, we've built, built this thing and we're ready for people to see it. Um, April 14th down at city park, the new soccer stadium, mm-hmm. We're going to have our big opening party uh, doors open wide. Uh, so Damon Davis's pillars of the Valley will um, open. So that's the permanent monument um, down there, but he's also premiered uh, going to be premiering a new film that he's created with a cinematographer from the film arrival. He worked okay. on the new star Wars, okay. you know, it's going to be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. uh, 
uh, that's a bit the of same a night, April right 14th, now. Yeah. April 14th, uh, seven to nine. So that'll be the opening weekend, uh, April 14th, 15th, 16th. But then, yeah, it's free open to the public. A lot of it is outdoors. You can experience it on your own time. Mm-hmm. Um, spread the word, um, and circulate it. But really, yeah, like we built this for people to see, um, we know people are traveling in all over for it. So mm-hmm. we really want our city to see it and celebrate it and say, like, look at what's happening here. Yeah. Um, spend time, uh, make it a summer of art in St. Louis. Yeah, no, that's, it's incredible. I mean, I think how monumental this is and, you know, listening to this podcast back, people are going to say, oh yeah, yeah, like that's cool. Like another art event in the summer, but like this is a three month, this is one of the biggest in the nation that's going to be happening. And, it, you know, it's, if you can't make it this weekend, you come out the other weekend, can't make it come after work. Like there's different things that you can do. And, and it sounds like you guys are going to be activating and I'm sure businesses locally and, and eateries and, you know, and stuff are going to be activating stuff around these spots where, you know, you can make it a whole day and you can make it a summer of supporting art because we always say, you know, art is so important to communities and whether that be music, whether that be poetry, whether that be, you know, physical art, you know, photography, photography is art. Um, you know, we were just talking with Jay over at rack about, you know, what is an artist? You know, it's so subjective of like, you know, um, somebody that does fashion or somebody that writes books, they're all artists, you know, in their own way and telling stories like you mentioned. So, um, So it's almost, you know, we're about two months out, two and a half months out, but like how, what's the, what's the vibe in the room when you guys meet with your team and and everything? Like, I'm sure like you guys are on 10 right now, like it's getting close. I mean, tell us about that energy and like what it means to your team um, of how close you came over, you know, been working on it for a long time. Yeah. I mean, it's been really cool to see as we've had, like our team has grown a lot over time as we get closer, more and more people keep joining. And like, Every time we start, we do a drive of the footprint. It's six miles long. So we start at Sugarloaf Mound, we end at the Grio, and we stop at these kind of moments all along the way. And at the end, inevitably, we kind of like look at each other and we're like, this is really important. Like yeah. what we're doing is important to get right. It's important to uh, build this thing. It's important for people to know about it. And I think that like, you know, we get caught up in the day to day. We're producing it. It's a hustle to get 30 artists to create all new work. Some of them very, very complicated. Um, but at the end of the day, when we can return to it, it's like, now if we get this right, there's nothing like it in the world. And, you know, that that's, I think, uh, you know, we want that to come out of St. Louis that like, it's a place where for years and years, like artists from here have redefined uh, what art means. And I think, that we want to celebrate that. We want us to know it like first, like I don't think people in St. Louis know how much art comes out of here, how many museums we have, how much is free and open, like we take it for granted because it's just there. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, building this thing that when we can return to like, yeah, we're part of something larger like that. Mm-hmm. That's what we return to. You're building something special. There's two things I write on my whiteboard at the office and it's, you know, build something special, but then under that it's, if not us, then who? And then if not now, then when? So that's kind of that approach that you all are taking with like, if we're, nobody's going to do it. Like nobody just does things just to do things. Like it takes a plan, it takes execution. Um, but that's, it's a good motto to have is like, if not us, then, then who, you know, because you guys, you're bringing this here and this is something that is only going to get bigger. And, and, you know, as people, you know, St. Louis needs to be known for something other than baseball or, you know, stuff like that, because, you know, there's a fact of more people actually, like you were mentioning, travel to St. Louis for, for art, you know, Fox, Muni, all these other institutions than sports. You know, it's hard to like wrap your head around that, but like there's more people that come in and out of St. Louis for those totally. those things than sports. Um, so it's just nice being able to, um, you know, be able to showcase that, build something special, but at the root of it, you know, realize that you're building something special and take yourself out of it and really give it back to the city. Yeah, um, for sure. I mean, I, you know, relate to what you have in your whiteboard of feeling like <laughs> we really, I think in building this, we were like, art has to do more and it can do more. And then like now is the time to actually create a platform that like can change things. Like you see it in, in our language, like whether it's on Instagram or our website, we talk about this phrase generational change. And we're like, Mm -hmm. what has changed because we did this? Like we're not interested in just building something that is a flash in the pan and cool. And like, Mm -hmm. great. We had a good party for three months. We will also want it to be a great party for three months. Absolutely. But at the end of the day, I think like, you know, now's a moment where things are changing and we want to be a part of that change and like really push the boundaries of what's possible here. Yeah. 
yeah, I think that that's special. And I, I think that as it gets closer and, you know, as people start to see it more and, you know, news and press picks it up that, you know, it's going to really get, get around that. And, you know, the power of social media, we talk about it all the time is like, once April 15th, once April 15th, it's like the power of social media is going to do the work. You know, people are going to get that FOMO and we call it FOMO marketing, you know? Yeah. So it's like, you know, people are going to find out. So, um, what makes, in your opinion, you've been in this, you know, arts and culture scene, like you said, for over 15 years or, you know, more than 15 years now, but what do you think makes art so vital to St. Louis? Um, you know, if you, I know that's a really 10,000 foot question, but like in your opinion, in your experience, what makes it so special and vital? Yeah. I mean, in all my work, I've always worked with, you know, contemporary art. And I think a lot of people think about contemporary art as the most like elitist alienating thing, but like when it gets down to it, all it means is like artists who are making work right now. And I think like artists have always been a voice of their time. And I think that like art is a way of telling stories. And with Counter Public, we're working with artists who are looking to St. Louis and say, what are the histories here that haven't been uncovered? Mm -hmm. What are the histories we don't know about? But also what does the future look like? And I think that art is kind of uniquely positioned to bring people together to talk about challenging issues but also to push things and say like, and this is how it can change. And I think that's uh, kind of what I mean of like the, the region being ready for change. And I think art is a way to really accelerate that to say like, yeah. what is possible? And it like feels different when you go to a good performance, like you go to a concert and you leave and you're like, I feel like something is different. You know, like the air is charged when you see something like a good dance performance or good theater, or good, whatever, like yeah. art form is your choice. And I think that, that that feeling is what we're trying to capture of just like that feeling of possibility that feeling of like yes we can move through difficult issues and also look to a future and saying like it could be different and it could feel like this and you know right. i think if we create moments where people connect to that then we have succeeded yeah absolutely and and really what what, what you're creating is like like you said you're capturing moments but um, in creating stories, but also you're, you're creating civic pride, you're creating um, more travel, which then boosts more economy. So like you're really changing, like if you look at it full surface, like, and it's a lot of pressure when you think of it this way, but like you're changing the world right here in St. Louis in the Midwest. And, and I think that it's so untapped and there's so many people that are ready to say they're proud to be from St. Louis. They're proud to stay here and not move to LA or New York to, to try to chase a dream where they can chase it here. Um, and we were talking to the, the karate kid that was um, here where they were like um, they were filming it here or they were practicing here before they went to Broadway and all these performers came in from all over the world for like two months to, to really work on this, this play. And they all had mentioned like, I didn't know St. Louis was this cool. You know, I didn't know there was so many places to go and so many places to eat and so many places to take my kids. So um, I hope that, that we're going to, you know, also see that when some of these artists, because I don't know who's coming in for it, but there's probably a lot of big names coming in just to check it out and just to hang out. But like, they're going to be like, Oh, this is actually really, really cool. You know, I think it, I think St. Louis, like, especially when you talk about art, but like, I, d I don't think we know how cool it is, mm -hmm. but much less when people come here and they're like, wait, the art museum is free and it's this good. And like, then there's also the contemporary and the Pulitzer and the Lawmeyer Sculpture Park. And like, you actually spend time in the city and you're like, it's absolutely, you're floored by the quality and the range, mm -hmm. uh, the diversity across the region, really. And I think... Yeah, any any moment we get to sort of like beat that drum of like, yes, like this place is amazing. And I think when people come here and uh, they know it, and so we're creating an opportunity of like, come right now. You yeah. know, that again, what we're talking about, that sort of three month run, it's like you get the FOMO April 15th, you still have time to get it before July 15th, <laughs> but like this three months, like everybody show up and like, let's have an amazing time. So is that going to be, you know, the three months, like obviously there's, there's going to be activations on certain days, but like the three months, like stuff's just going to be happening every day, like seven days a week or like, tell us a little bit about, you know, the vision of like what you see, like obviously kicking off April 14th, you know, with Damon and over there at STL city, which is an amazing project. I've seen plans for that and all that, but um, you know, is this going to be going on every day, like all, all throughout three months? I mean, that's, that's a lot, that's a big project. Yeah. I mean, it's open. A lot of the work you can experience anytime. Um, all of our sites and venues will be open around like Wednesday through Saturday, many, uh, kind of seven days a week though. Yeah. Um, so it, it's always available for people to experience at least part of it, but then, yeah, there will be programs every week. Um, every Saturday you can go to one of our which is at the Luminary at the uh, City Park Pavilion. 
and then at the Grio, and there will be a storyteller from the communities to guide you through it. Say like, this is the art, but also this is the context of the neighborhood you're in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're doing partnerships with a lot of the places like Opera Theater is going to do a performance. Um, so there will be music, there will be film screenings, there will be talks. Um, and kind of throughout the three months run, I would say pay attention to our socials, pay attention to the website. Um, there will be things happening every week. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. So that's where that three years comes in because this, this isn't just a, you know, like this isn't just a weekend festival. This isn't just, you know, art. this is, this is you're creating a vibe, you're creating an energy. Um, and I, and when you say three months, like three months is a long time, you know? So like, it's, it's hard enough to create, you know, one event, let alone 50, 60, hundred different little mini micro events, and then plan for people that are coming in town um, and performing these projects. So um, I think it's amazing what, what you all are doing. And, and, you know, I, I want our listeners to get a better vibe and better energy of it. Um, you know, of what, what's going into the project is it's going to be big for our city. So if we can all get behind it and really just make this thing and just blow it up. Um, but yeah, other, other than that, I mean, I, I, if you want to tell people a little bit more about how they can support maybe, you know, shout out, I actually, I want to ask you something real quick. It is the STL bucket list show. So the bucket list started by highlighting, bucket list spots. Now bucket list is subjective, but you know, everybody has their own version of what like a bucket list is. So I always ask the question, um, if you, somebody comes in town and they come and stay at your house or whatever, like where are a few spots that you're taking them? Because then that'll give me a good idea. And I know you, you want to shout out everybody, but like you can think about it, but like, what are like a few spots that are like, I have to take my friend to this spot, this spot, this spot. It could be a restaurant, could be a museum, could be a park, could be anything. Good question. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm hosting people all the time through this. So I, I have my, uh, my loops through the food scene is so good that like, I, I, uh, I would say if I have to pick one restaurant, it's Indo. Ooh, uh, yeah. I, I have to hit up that spot if I can afford it and, uh, have time. Um, Great the unsung too. spot as I love, uh, kind of in the wider region, taking people to Alton and up the river road. That's like one of those special places where you actually get a different view of like, right. Like how the rivers have shaped this place. It's like beautiful, but it's also, you kind of get a sense of St. Louis. You it's can't pretty, always see pretty the pretty river. Different. Right. You know, like, um, so being like right alongside there and in um, the fall chain, chain of rocks bridge <laughs> yeah. up there too. So those are some of the like landscape areas. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm, constantly taking people over to Cahokia mounds as well. Like yeah. right in our backyard is the, the sort of largest earthwork in the Americas, right? Mm -hmm. Like this, the city that place was people take for granted too. Yeah. I mean, talk about it enough. One of those things is like St. Louis's uh, longer arc of history is like, you know, when the Mississippians were building those mounds, it was a city as big as London uh, really? at the time, you know, it's this massive complex society and like, the mounds are what we have left to really see that. So yeah, I take people over to Cahokia um, and then bring them back over to Sugarloaf and do the sort of like and tour. Oh, you do it every uh, time you bring my people in? Yeah. Often, yeah. Like, <laughs> you've, driven, then, you've driven that so you know, many times. <laughs> and I'm down in like, I'm a South City guy on Fo Fox Park. So I spend oh, time okay. on Cherokee Street nice. um, over at Little Fox. Um, that's your spot down, down on, on my street. So yeah, yeah, that's a good restaurant. Press and Lucky Accomplice are good too. They're great. Combe yeah. is over there too. Combe is a little good kombucha spot. There's so many, that's, that's like what we really do is like we highlight, you know, we have three pillars, you know, you know, people, places and events. So it's like people are, you know, people like you, people that own businesses, entrepreneurs, um, and then places are obviously could be restaurants, could be parks, could be anything. Um, and then events is obviously events, but we really try to focus on people, places and events that make St. Louis special. And that's all we've done for three years is just post everything that we see, like that history about the mountains, like that's something that we'll post, you know, because that's something yeah. that people need to know. Um, we've been able to build this really tight knit community. And I think the biggest thing is just staying authentic, staying real. They know it's two people, you know, two or three people doing it, me, my wife, and a couple people that help us out. But like, you know, there's a certain authenticity that brings value in that. Like if we go highlight Indo, they know that we just went there for a date night. Like it wasn't like a paid feature by Sauce Magazine. You know, it's like, totally, yeah. it's different. Now, of course there's paid opportunities, but we truly really try to keep it authentic. And we try to highlight all parts of St. Louis. Um, so I think that this, you know, counter public is going to be something that we're going to be involved with in over those three months of just like popping out, you know, when you have those events, just posting the events, staying active, like educating people like, Hey, you're in Chesterfield, come down for the weekend, you know, and come, come experience something because, um, you know, it's right here. You don't got to go anywhere. You know, you don't have to go anywhere. So what, what, what counter public, where, where'd you get the name from? 
Counterpublic, it's a, it's a word that... It's like a band. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> we get that question a lot, and it is a word that um, has like a longer meaning, but it's basically um, when you think of the public, like the general public is a phrase you might hear, and a counterpublic, uh, it means like different groups of people who don't feel always represented mm -hmm. in a general public. And I think in some ways, like that's that's most people. Don't feel like, yeah, like every, every sort of like, um, you know thing is created for me in mind. And I think public art often, like as it's been understood is like either kind of alienating or it feels like it's the, you know, most vague thing. Like you just put it there because it's unobjectionable. Right. And we really want to say like, what is public art that is actually for people mm -hmm. and it's for specific communities. It's for sp specific places, specific neighborhoods. And like the, those many counter publics make up our city. Mm -hmm. uh, so I like that. it's, uh, yeah, that, that's the sort of history of it. And I think for us, it's really like how to think about art differently. So and the Cherokee art. Street event was a counter public then. Too. It was called counter public then too. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was the same, same way. Like that version, it was in 2019 and it was in like the Panaderias and in, punk club and in uh, a yeah. T-topia tea shop and the oh. Buddhist temple, you know, is really oh, yeah. thinking about like, what is art in these places too? You know, it's not right. just for white walls. It's not just for this kind of like elitist experience. It's like, it's all free. It's open to the public, but it was really in places that people spent time. And we were like, if art can't matter here, then like, it doesn't matter. what are we doing? Yeah. yeah. It's like, like if you have doing? to like go and like, sit real quietly and like nod back and forth and like every movie yeah. you see at the Met or any of these places where people are just, you know, there, but like, I love that T-topia, like how does it operate here in like Cherokee street? And I love their team there. And I, I still need to meet them who, you know, runs their organization there, but like they constantly bring people to that neighborhood and they kill it every single time. You know, the sax, the jazz festivals down the street, the print bazaar, like so many people come out there and buy these $10 prints. And that's so many artists that don't get an opportunity to really showcase um, you know, so that's really, really cool that you started there because like, that's just so St. Louis, you know, you started literally in Cherokee street, like a lot of businesses start there and then they move a lot totally. of good, a lot of good spots start in that neighborhood and move. So I think that it's, it's really cool that you guys started there and, and, um, you know, yeah, St. Louis is just so unique and I, I feel the shift that you're feeling right now is like the energy and I think it's just going to get better. Um, so what are you most excited about? What am I most excited about, about right now? About, about Counter Public. About Counter Public. I think um, I'm excited to actually be able to just step out, back and watch people experience it. Yeah. Uh, the number one thing we hear is like, so, you know, I didn't talk so much about the background, but like we're looking to Jefferson Avenue as a like story of the city's history. It's kind of a timeline. We're starting with the mound. We're ending, ending at the Grio, And like the number one thing we hear is, people were saying, I never heard of that. I didn't know that happened. I didn't know about this mound. I didn't know, uh, or I've heard of the griot, but I've never been there. And we're really like, like experience your city in a new way, you know? And so I think I'm just most excited about that arc of like, you know, we built it and then like step back and I want to see people own it and take it and say like, this is for me, this is mine now. And like what, what they want to do with it from there. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm actually excited about that moment where it like, connects with people and just watch and just like you know it's almost it's it's almost that moment you know where you can step back like there's a couple times in our life like when I got married like you just step back and you just look at everybody there for you and you know you're creating something but it's not you know this isn't James's thing this isn't you know any anybody on the team saying they're all you know probably donating a lot of time and donating a lot of resources to make this thing even possible um, so really that's what it's, you know, just being able to step back and just be able to sit back and breathe for a little bit because you'll be able to breathe yeah. and be able to say, okay, this is, this is real. And like, you know, we built something special and, and we're going to, we're going to keep doing it and then just get in the ground and doing it even better and better and just finding new ways. So, so the Jefferson, you know, is a really, really interesting point. So when you do it in three years and this might be like leaking all your secrets, you don't have to tell us, but like, is there going to be a different thing that you're going to do three years from now and then like continue down these different stories? That's the idea is that we'll move to different parts of the region. Uh, you know, another thing people can do, send us your ideas. Where, where do you connect with? And I think that that sort of bucket list thinking is part of it for us. Like we we're starting um, places that people are already active in doing the work right. uh, on the grassroots level. And so like, we know that that will be part of it. Like 
where where is a kind of activity already happening? Where's where's their energy that we can push and put a big spotlight on and uh, for three years, really just like build something special. And um, so, yeah, we're already thinking about the next editions. We're not ready to say like, oh, where are we working and what will that look like? But yeah, the idea is that we move to different parts of the region every three years. Um, and like to that point earlier, you're saying like yeah, in three years and six years, like what, what that builds mm -hmm. actually is like, we'll look around to like a changed city. There will be like all of these permanent public artworks, there will be kind of more activity happening, we hope. Yeah. Um, more national change. coverage, more people will actually yeah, know exactly um, about St. Louis. So, yeah, that's cool. And it's cool to think about it. And, and you know, like like you said, okay, you know, 18 years from now, that's six editions, you know, and then you have this whole connection. Like maybe you're going to like be in different counties or in Illinois. Like you don't know where you're going to be, you know, and um, people are going to pick this up in other cities and they're going to do, you know, they're going to take the template and, you know, and they're going to run with it, you know, so. No, it's uh, interesting. I think like St. Louis has been a model for a lot of people. And we think this is just a part of that long tradition of like create something amazing that people want to steal. And like, that's, you know, that's we're good. happy with that. We're already getting people reaching out. Yeah. Other cities saying like, what you're doing is really interesting. Like, can we do this? Can you show us like how you did? And we're like, Sure, but it'll never be like it was in St. Louis. Right. You know, right. I think. No, that's cool. Uh, we're, we're always interested to build something new, build something a little better. Yeah, and give it that own flavor and that, that grit, you know, and like that's that's what I, I keep saying branding, but like as a marketing guy, like I'm like, I just love like, I love the nuances of like, it's kind of a secret, but it's not a secret, you know, like, and not, not, not saying that's what your mission was on it, but like, I'm like, I keep seeing it. I'm like engaging and sharing it on social, but I'm like, so like, what's going, like, you know, it's just like this little, and that's probably yeah. like part of your thing is like, let me drop all these seeds and then lead up to like where your marketing plan really kicks in is probably right about now in the next couple months and just really, really pushing it. Um, so yeah. Um, other than that, James, I mean, if you want to, if you want to, you know, shout out some people, shout out, you know, some social tags, maybe the website where people can support you. And if there's anything else you want to educate people on about the event, feel free. Um, the floor is yours and kind of go from there. Yeah, I mean, the easy way to find us is uh, at CounterPublic on Instagram and CounterPublic.org online. Uh, definitely follow us. We're on Twitter, and I think there's a little bit of a TikTok presence, but like, don't <laughs> don't judge us too harshly. Um, we're on Facebook. But really, I want I would shout out, you know, you started the show shouting out Rack, and I will do it again because, like, they were some of the earliest believers in CounterPublic and say, like, what, what you're doing connects with their mission of, like, being the – kind of caretakers of public art in the region, but also the public funder. And they came on board earlier and said, like, co-sign, here's resources, like, dream big. And um, I think that that helped us get started. Um, we've had incredible support from uh, many different folks. Um, we're nonprofit, so we're not doing this for money. We're doing this for, uh, for you all. Um, but, yeah, follow us, and we hope to see you out on Jefferson. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we'll drop all the info and we'll, um, you know, tag it in the, in the comments, but yeah, thanks for coming on and sharing the story. Counter public dropping April 15th to July 15th, 2023. I'm going to read one more thing um, that was on your website as well. So counter public 2023 is one of the nation's largest public art platforms, bringing 30 plus new artist commissions to life in public parks, gardens, historic homes, museums, all around the city. Um, this is free art installations, performances, screenings, conversations, and parties. Uh, we did talk about partying a little bit. There will be some parties. Um, <laughs> and this will animate uh, the six miles of Jefferson Avenue with art, but more importantly, stories that will live forever. So um, guys, tap in, um, you know, support local art, because when you support art, you support St. Louis. Um, so, yeah, we'll see you guys uh, next week. Shout out to Half Coast Studios for producing another fire episode. And then, of course, my friends over at Rack STL um, for allowing us to even put on the podcast week after week. We drop every Wednesday. Um, so yeah, see you guys next week. Today they rep Saint Louis, yeah. They rep Saint Louis. They rep Saint Louis.